So I can't imagine any better way to spend a beautiful fall Friday than heading out to like a town-wide picking event. So with my husband here today, we're gonna get going, see what we can find. I think it's gonna be amazing. Stop number one. We're gonna go see what they got up here. Fresh cup of coffee have no idea if this is going to be any good or not, but we're about to find out. So this was my first time ever attending this event. It's called Pickin' Time on 59, and it runs from Siloam Springs, Arkansas, all along Highway 59, about 25 miles to Sulphur Springs, Arkansas. And it was just a ton of garage sales. Some people had kind of grouped together and coordinated like a big type of flea market. They had sales outside churches and in parking lots of businesses. There was a ton of stuff to dig through. All right, first stop was a bust, but you never know until you look. Second stop, this is a field and there are a ton of cars here and tents set up. So I'm curious to see if this is gonna be old stuff or more like crafting, I don't know. So this second stop had a lot of really great vendors out there, people that had actual old primitive items. One of the things that caught my eye was this brass book stand. Unfortunately, it wasn't in very good condition and the price he wanted for it was pretty high, so I passed on it, but it was an interesting piece. I hadn't seen anything like that in a while. Manufacturer of Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. I've been on the hunt lately for more primitive items, especially vintage kitchenware items. So these rolling pins caught my eye, and there's an old kind of hand beater here in just a second. Stuff like that has been selling well for me online. I don't do super well with old tools, but this primitive kitchen stuff does pretty good. I was really hunting for some stoneware too. Did find one crock bowl that I'll show you here in a little bit. And then flatware. I've kind of gotten into flatware recently. That's a master butter knife. I did take that home with me. Cool piece. And there was some nice pieces kind of down in here if you're willing to dig. <laughs> These are fun. Salt and pepper shakers. $10 for the pair. Look at the spoon and the fork. How hilarious are those? I've never seen those before. This vendor had a lot of old books and other ephemera items. I really thought this kind of French piece right here was interesting. I don't speak French, so I don't know what that says. I did grab a couple books from her that I'll show you guys more later. All right, stop two it was pretty good. Found that rocking chair, which is nice and sturdy. Paid 20 for that. And I bundled together this nice crock bowl and a whole stack of old children's books. I'll show you guys a little bit more of these later. But um, bundled that together for 35. Found this old French book. Yes, it's falling apart, but it was a dollar and um, it was worth the risk for a dollar. So some cool things there. Some people had prices that were a little bit more than what I wanted to pay, um, but I'm glad we stopped. So in my new booth space, I'm in need of more pieces of furniture. And I was drawn to these pieces out here. That rocking chair right there was absolutely gorgeous. And there's another solid round oak table right here that was beautiful. This guy in general just had lots of great furniture pieces, but unfortunately his prices were full scale retail, probably even higher retail than what I could sell things for. And you got to remember that you make your money when you buy. If you pay too much for something on the front end, then it's really hard to get the profit that you need from it. So I wound up passing on all of his great furniture.
This sale that we stopped at was half off of their already garage sale prices. So these blue glass mugs were a great find. I did take those home with me. So I think we've made it like maybe two miles <laughs> down the road and there's already been so much stuff. So there's definitely some junk, but there's some great stuff too. This place that we just stopped at, everything was 50% off. I got a nice set of blue glass steins or mugs. They were 75 cents a piece. They're selling for seven or eight dollars a piece online. So what a deal. Could have bought myself a bike there, but gosh, there's just like miles and miles and miles more to go. So we gotta keep looking. One thing that I haven't found yet is some more furniture. I've only got that rocking chair and I need some furniture pieces. No luck yet. I spotted some furniture and Maybe some taxidermy or some other animal. There's something over here on the ground. We're gonna go check out. All right, if you're watching and you know what these are, please tell me in the comments. I could not really figure them out. I'm assuming that they're bases for taxidermy. Like maybe that's what you wrap the skin around. I don't know. They were just super funky looking. And they were in the parking lot at this church garage sale. What a random item to have out here they did have a gorgeous piece of furniture um, it had some water damage on the top and from sitting outside in that humidity the drawers were stuck it was super heavy and even though it was beautiful i decided that it was just too heavy and more work than what i wanted to deal with i had this barbie uh -huh. happy holidays barbie she's one i had Look at her pretty blonde hair. So we're getting to the end. Well, it's not the end of the day, but it's after lunch. The end of our day, possibly. And right. it's hot. Yep. And I'm feeling like all of the good furniture is probably already gone. Lots of places to stop, with lots of little kitschy stuff and decor. And... So we may have kind of already missed the boat on that, you think? It seems Maybe. that way. I don't, I don't know. know. I guess did this start yesterday, technically? Well, I think some people maybe were out yesterday. Okay. I thought it was supposed to start today. Because we got here in the morning. I don't know. There's some more places to stop. But even though I don't know that most people have furniture, if they do, they seem to really have... I mean, they're fair prices, but not like deal prices. Yeah. So... I got maybe... I don't know. Another, maybe another hour. Hour. left in me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what we can do. Hey there, what's up? We're back at home and I want to share with you guys the haul from our trip to Pick and Time on 59. I thought it was a pretty decent little pick. I was disappointed that we didn't find any more furniture. That was something that I'm really in need of and I just was not impressed with what was out there, but we got some other good stuff. So let's see what we picked up. Right, the first thing that I bought was this whole set of kind of primitive kitchen utensils. I paid $12 for all of these pieces. So there's a nice kind of primitive rolling pin with the cute green edges, the green handles, nice old wooden spoon, and I've got two mashers. Oh, they're all kind of stuck together. Masher, another masher with the green handle, and this slotted spoon, I don't know exactly what that's for. Somebody tell me what this is for. I don't know, but it's got the red handle on it. So things like this have been selling well for me lately, especially if you can find any that have kind of some original paint on the edges. And that's what drew me to the rolling pin. So those were a cool collection to find, which that's a great tip whenever you're out picking, try to grab like just as much as you want from one vendor and take it all up to them at one time and ask like, what is your best price for all of this? And typically, you can get some money just shaved right off the top of your total. So that was the case for this fantastic stoneware bowl. These have been really popular right now. 18 was what she had on it. I paid less than that because again, I kind of bundled all of this together. And then she had a bunch of really great old paper. For old paper, it doesn't always sell the best for me, but I just love it anyway. Look at this sweet book, Jolly Jingles. The coloring on these books, you guys, are just amazing. I love them so much. All these different pictures in here. 
So this one is falling apart. This is a very old book. Let me see if there's a date on it. No, I'm not finding a date on it, but someone could take this apart if they wanted to and use these as prints or just if you're a children's book collector. It's a beautiful old book. I also grabbed this Christmas Delights. Just a pretty Christmas book. Again, with some beautiful art in it. How sweet is that? And then these two kind of just larger children's books, The Town Mouse and The Country Mouse. You guys remember that story? I remember this story. Again, just fantastic art and colors in these old books. How fun is that? Here's this one, A Child's Garden of Verses. So I bundled all of these together with that stoneware bowl. I can't remember exactly what I paid for all of it, but I wound up getting, you know, a dollar or two kind of off of every single thing in that bundle. So not a bad price. So I've kind of been into flatware lately. I bought an entire basket of old flatware from an antique dealer that I knew who was kind of phasing out her business. And I've been working through that basket, found some pretty incredible pieces in there, including this spoon that I'm going to show a picture of right here. It is a commemorative spoon from an insane asylum hospital in Northern Illinois. I put that on my Facebook page a couple weeks ago and it is officially my first viral Facebook post. It reached like one and a half million people. I already sold the spoon <laughs> for significantly more money than I was expecting to. I had several people that wanted to buy it. I guess those are a thing. I guess that that's something that was done back in the day, commemorative spoons from insane asylum hospitals. Anyway, there's a couple of them out there, but they are pretty rare. And so someone who collects them ended up buying that one from me. But going through that basket of flatware has made me want to just be on the lookout for other flatware pieces. So I grabbed these from a dollar pile. I think I wound up paying $4 for all of them. Um, this one is a butter knife, but it is a master butter knife. So see how like the handle is perpendicular to the blade, right? And I've learned that that's because this is what would use to kind of make the first slices in the butter. And then they would put the pats on each of the little butter pats. And then you would take the butter knife that's kind of like completely flat this way. And that's what you would use to scrape on butter. So master butter knives, there's not a lot of them around. This one was a dollar. And then this little sweet set of spoons, and I've got to kind of look them up. I don't know like everything about flatware. I've been trying to learn over the past couple weeks as I've gone through this whole box that I bought. But these, I was able to find four of them and they're small. They're a little bit kind of like a demi toss size, a little coffee spoon, but they've got this rounded bowl. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what type of spoon they are. So holler in the comments if you know. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research on them, but I thought the little set of them was sweet. And I paid $4 for all of these. All right, so another place that we stopped at was doing 50% off of their garage sale prices. So garage sale prices are already pretty cheap. You take another 50% off of that and we were talking some deals. So there I grabbed this, I think there I got about five or six of them, maybe, maybe just five of these pretty blue vintage mugs, steins. They're a little big to be a mug. They're more kind of like a beer stein, but look at the pretty pattern on the bottom of them. I've been selling a lot of glassware in my booth, a lot of glass sets, if I can find some nice sets of them. These were a buck 50 a piece and they were half off that. So not a bad price at all for some really cool vintage pieces that are unique that you're not seeing a lot of things made like this on a shelf right now. That same sale, I grabbed this old cheese grater. Take a look at that. So it is the Mouli, M-O-U-L-I, Grater Mouli, made in France. I, have, I need to look this up, but I think that's what it is, right? Like you put your cheese, Parmesan, down there and you grate it. It was $2.50. So I, again, have been able to sell kind of cool, old, primitive kitchen utensils. So I thought this one was a great find for $2.50. So you may remember back in the video, there was one guy that had a lot of really nice furniture. Unfortunately, his prices were just too high what I could pay for resale, but I did grab a couple things from him. One is this sweet little dog statue. These little vintage dog statues, I can just sell them. I've never had one that I haven't been able to sell. So this guy was in good shape. He didn't have any chips on him. 
So he was a good find there. And then this I'm really excited about. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So this guy is heavy. It is oak and it's old, but check it out. It's a tri-fold mirror. Look at that. And look at that amazing mirror age. It's losing all that silver, which I happen to love. And then it's got a hook where you can hang it. So this guy had 25 on it, and then he marked it down to 10, and then he marked it down to $5. It does have these little brass feet, so you could stand it up like this if you wanted to, or you could hang it on the wall. Again, I'm just gonna show you that silvering. So my husband was like, well, doesn't that mean the mirror is damaged? And I was like, yes, technically. However, this is a whole look, like this is the thing. I think this may be my favorite thing that I found. The fact that it's oak, it's heavy, it was $5. I think this is a great piece and I don't think I'm gonna have any trouble selling it if I don't keep it myself. That same guy had these two vintage standing frames for $2 a piece. They're just kind of, you know, stand. They don't have anything in them. I've got those bird prints. If you remember from my video a little while back, I think I can put some of those in there. Two bucks a piece. Two bucks a piece, it was a no brainer. So there was one guy that had a sign and it said the best garage sale, which I applaud him for his confidence, <laughs> but it was not the best garage sale. Now, if you were looking for old tools, he had a ton of old tools. I found one thing there with him and it was this. And I'm curious if you guys know what this is. When I first saw it, I didn't know what it was, but I thought it looked really cool. So it is a tie rack. So you would screw it into the wall like this and you hang your ties over it. But I could see it used, yes, and I paid a quarter. That's what I paid for it. I could see it used to put postcards, like slide postcards in to display them this way. Like I'm seeing it like this and being used to display vintage photos, postcards, fun paper, like I see it as a photo display. It just, something about it just kind of caught my eye. The wood, the brass for a quarter at the best garage sale. So I talked about this a little bit earlier in the video, but I wanted to show you this stuff again. There was the one kind of inside estate sale that we went to and I did another bundle deal there. I did buy a stack of spoons because for some reason spoons in my house, like we don't have any spoons, they just disappear. So needed a bunch of spoons. So these are for my personal use. But then I grabbed these four teaspoons also. Teaspoons are just difficult to find. These are not a particularly nice brand. They're not old, but I don't think I'll have any problems selling them because again, you just don't see a lot of teaspoons around anymore. If you see teaspoons when you're out thrifting, for sure you should grab them. And the guy had a ton of old bird statues. I found this one. It does have the old Painted in Japan sticker on the bottom. It's in pretty good shape. It's got just a little bit of wear on it. I had a smaller version of this recently that I did in a flat lay sale and it sold. These little statues, they're just kind of kitschy. They're kind of quirky, but they're an easy sell for me. I think they're just nice little shelf accents. And then he had this McCoy brown casserole dish. So it was five for that. The spoons were, they were not individually priced. I just kind of picked what I wanted to out of the set. This guy was $7.50 and I think I paid seven bucks for all of it together. So not bad. So one of the garage sales we stopped at had a table full of old coffee mugs and I was drawn to these. There were five of these just kind of basic. They look like they're from an old restaurant, like someplace that you would go, you know, your local breakfast joint, right? And grab a cup of coffee. And when I bought them from the lady, she said that her sister used to own a restaurant and that's where they were from. So I bought five of them. That they look just like this and I paid $1.50 for each of them. And then like 10 miles down the road, we weren't even in the same town. We were in a totally different town. I was at another garage sale and down on the ground, there was a box filled with more of this exact same stuff. So I still haven't counted it. I don't even know how much is in there. But I mean, several place settings, these great bowls, saucers, again, that all has that same logo on it. So asked her what she wanted for that. She said seven bucks for the whole box. <laughs> so I wound up basically buying like a whole set of restaurant wear, which is great. I think they're gonna be great sellers. And I like when I can kind of buy some things like that in bulk 
and list them in bulk. When you have a lot of pieces available, I think that's attractive to people that are kind of looking for, you know, to outfit their whole table. So $1.50 for the mugs and then seven bucks for the entire rest of the box. And just how crazy, like, is it all from the same place? Is it all from the same sister that used to own the restaurant? I don't know. It seems fishy. I feel like it could be. So I did not have much luck with furniture except for this fantastic rocking chair and that's the last thing to share with you guys in the haul. It is in great shape. A lot of times rocking chairs are creaky. Pieces are kind of coming out of joint because they're moving all the time. This one has definitely got some wear on it but it is still so solid and I really like rocking. I am tempted to just completely keep this for myself <laughs> in our living room. Probably will wind up taking it to the booth but I love sitting in it. It's so comfortable. I uh, paid 20 bucks for it, which was a fantastic price for a really nice, solid, sturdy rocking chair. So that was my first pick in time on 59 trip. Would love to hear what you thought about the finds. And just a reminder that I have opened a brand new online store that's focused completely on vintage and home decor. And a lot of what you have seen in this video and in other thrift haul videos is available for sale in that online shop. So I'll link it right up here and it'll also be in the video description box if you wanna go check it out. Some of this will make its way up to my booth space. Some of it may show up in a live sale. I don't know, we'll figure that out. Hey, and if you enjoyed this video, if you like coming along thrifting, there is an entire playlist of thrift haul videos that will pop up here in the end that you can go check out. I appreciate you guys coming along with me today. I hope you had fun spending a little bit of time in Northwest Arkansas doing some junking, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.